Welcome back to The Wandering Wind, and today I'm counting down my top five favorite video games. And first of all, I want to say there are a couple caveats to this list. First of all, only one game for, per franchise, so I'm not going to be doing like all five of them Final Fantasy or all five of them whatever. I'm going to be doing one per franchise, so don't worry about that. But um, another thing is... Nothing that is so obscure that it's not going to be recognizable. So, no, like, um, you know, nothing that's going to be crazy, like a Japanese import that no, Japanese import that no one's ever heard of. So, anyway, without further ado, let's get into the first of five. And number five is going to be, um, Mario. Super... Mario, specifically Super Mario 3. I loved this game. This was actually my first Mario game back on the, the original NES. Yeah, that's right, the original NES. This was awesome. I tell you what, I have never, ever seen a platform game until I came across Mario at like the age of five, six and we started playing it as a family, and it was just a great time. Now, granted, the graphics today are kind of dated for people that are used to, like, HD resolutions, high cell shaded graphics, and yada, yada, yada. But you know what? For the time, it was wonderful, and I loved it. Um, and number four is going to be Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped. Now, I know we had the Crash t t the uh, Crash Trilogy, Insane Trilogy now, but I've never played it personally, so I can't recommend it. Besides, they did rework a lot of the um, um, the or, the original mechanics for the games in that re-release, so I can't really recommend it. Um... But definitely, if you ever have a chance to get a hold of Crash Bandicoot 3, that, I think, was the best of all the games in the series, and definitely my all-time favorite. And number three is going to be, of course, Pokemon Moon. <laughs> well, Sun and Moon, to be honest. I'll include both versions here just because it's the seventh generation. But um, Sun and Moon have definitely been my favorite Pokemon series games of all time. Um, just because the graphics are amazing, the gameplay is fantastic, and the learning curve is surprisingly easy compared to most of the Pokemon releases. Um, it's really more of a hand-holding experience, which does take away from the series um, aesthetic, but at the same time, it does play more of a, um, entry role for the series again for a lot of newer players, which kind of helps. Um, and at the number two spot, I'm going to give this one to a game that I don't know how many of you actually have played, but, um, this is going to be, um, Mega Man Battle Network 6. Um, the Battle Network series um, kind of reminds you of a semi-active um, or um, live-action or real-time strategy or real-time battle mechanic kind of game, but with RPG elements. So you play as Mega Man, you're using... Um, what they call battle chips to attack and defend against your enemies in a turn-based kind of setting. It's really awesome. The storyline of every single game is great, and the overarching plotline is just amazing if you really look into it. It's actually got a follow-up series called Mega Man Star Force that actually continues the trend and is really great. Um, if you ever if you ever had the chance to pick up either one, you're definitely not going to be missing out on. Uh, you're definitely going to be 
entering into a really great thing. Um, and at my number one spot is going to be my all-time favorite Final Fantasy game, which is Final Fantasy IX. Now, some of you may go, ah, but what about seven? Well, what about it? Uh, I loved it just the same, but at the same time, um, the dated graphics did make it difficult for me to get back into it after playing it once and then playing the later releases. Even the Final Fantasy VIII has aged better than Final Fantasy VII, in my personal opinion. Now, when it comes to the 2D um, Final Fantasy games, they're great because 2D um, graphics don't really have a bad aging effect because most displays just make it a bit more, a bit bigger, maybe a bit less sharp, but it's still quality. Whereas with Final Fantasy VII, when you get up to like HD resolutions and you stretch it out like some of these consoles do, you, well, like the PS3 can do, you end up having the sharp edges and the pixelated edges of the polygons come into the forefront, and it's really distracting for someone that isn't used to that, and I'm one of them. But Final Fantasy IX has really aged well. I mean, yes, it's still got the edges problems and the pixelation, but definitely not as bad as Final Fantasy VII did. And the story and the mechanics of the game were just excellent for me. Um, not saying that the materia system for Final Fantasy VII was horrible, or that the um, junction system wasn't great, but just for Final Fantasy VIII, but really just the simplicity of learning and equipping skills in Final Fantasy IX was excellent. So with that in mind, that is my top five list. If you want to um, follow me for more top five lists every day or every week, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. If you want to help me make more top five lists and other videos like this, please make sure to check out the link for my Patreon page. I am always happy to receive money to help me grow my channel even more every day. And I thank you guys so very much for all of your support in any way that you do. And I hope you guys have an awesome day. Thank you guys and have a great one.